Hello, this is Christy Patton Lukes, and welcome to the video. We'll be talking about Jacobian transforms. Our goal for this lecture is that you will be able to define and use Jacobian transforms to rearrange, redefine partial derivatives. We will be working on this in a couple of different lessons. The Jacobian transform is defined by this expression. And it relates partial derivatives to this conglomeration that the, says that the change of f and g with respect to x and y is the determinant of how f changes with x, holding y constant, f changes with y, holding x constant, g changes with x holding y constant and g changes with y holding x constant now from whenever you've learned about matrices and determinants you should remember that this is equal to the product going across the diagonal in one direction minus the product of the diagonal in the opposite direction. Now, if you use this, and again, you can prove all of these using rules for determinants, we can also define for this a transpose. A transpose means that if I were to take the order of either the top or the bottom and switch it, I will get the same thing with the opposite sign. And you can verify that using the rules for determinants. And it doesn't matter whether it was changing the order in the numerator or in the denominator. But when I switch the order, the location of any two variables, I switch the sign. The inversion simply says that I can do a reciprocal sort of relationship. So how f and g changes with x and y is the reciprocal of how x and y changes with f and g. And then finally we have our chain rule and this is incredibly helpful. So if we had f and g with respect to x and y and wanted to introduce new variables z and w, what this rule says is that I can simply insert them in a way that mathematically looks like I am you know, multiplying and dividing by the same quantity, but recognize that these are actually these determinants of partial derivative combinations. And so the chain rule here, we have introduced new variables in such a way that visually they appear to cancel, and if you work through the determinants, you get the original grouping. Now this is an example, and the example is already written out, um, but if you wanted to look at the Joule-Thompson coefficient, this is what happens when you go through an expansion valve. It's uh, essentially an isenthalpic process, and we want to see how temperature and pressure change are related. dt dp at constant h is of great importance to us, but this h holding the h constant may be easy to do in terms of actually operating a valve, but it's difficult for us to do mathematically. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the dt dp at constant h in terms of the Jacobian. Now, if you were to take this and use the definition of the derivatives, this says,
we want to take the derivative of this, but dh at constant h, this is 0. dh with respect to h, this is 1. So when I do the product, I end up with dt dp at constant h times 1 minus 0, going the other direction. So therefore, I can use this as a way of taking a partial derivative and rewriting it as a Jacobian by introducing the path in both the numerator and denominator. Now once I've done that, I can take this and rewrite it in terms of variables that I would rather use. T and P are typically the ones that we are most fond of. They're easy to work with. And so therefore I can use the chain rule. So I can take the DTH and put it with a DTP. And then the DPH I can put with a TP also. And we have our chain rule used. Now, my T's line up here. So I'm going to be able to reinterpret that as dh dp at constant t. But here I have p's, but they don't quite line up. So I can switch the order, but when I switch the order, I introduce a negative sign. So I now have that. Looks like I've left the negative sign out of this next step. dt dh or dth dtp is the dh dp at constant t dpt dph is dt dh at constant p the minus sign carried forward and this is fine i would rather look at this as dh dt at constant p so i can move it to the denominator using the inversion rule and we end up with this expression here. Now this could further be simplified and analyzed using rules about dh equals t ds plus v d p dv plus mu dn, etc. But I have a starting point. So let's look at another one. This is how P changes with volume for an isentropic process. So our first step is going to be to look at this as a Jacobian. So we'll rewrite it in Jacobian notation. So we'll introduce the path. Now then, I would like this to be in terms of, again, we will go with the variables P and T. And so I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. Okay, so I want P and T here. And I'm just going to, if you take a moment and look at this, you'll see that algebraically it's exactly the same thing as we had before. Now, the P's match here. So therefore, the numerator is ds dt at constant p. The denominator, it isn't anything that's very clear and obvious. So let's use the definition of the determinant to write this out. So it's dv dp holding t constant times ds dt holding p constant minus dv dt holding p constant ds dp holding t constant. So we now have this in terms of variables p and t for all of my changes. Therefore, my paths are all isobaric or isothermal. But I'd like to simplify this. And we're going to try this time to turn it into those measurable quantities. So most of these are okay. I have that 
ds dt at constant pressure is going to be c sub p divided by t. So that's going to take care of these two. dv dp at constant temperature and dv dt at constant uh, pressure are both going to be those compressibilities. But dsdp at constant t is not on my list of measurable quantities. So what am I going to do with this one? ds dp holding temperature constant. For these, I look through my list of Maxwell's that we've developed and see which of those work. And in fact, we see that this is negative dv dt at constant pressure. So let's now begin substituting these in. I said that the dv dp and dv dt were going to be some of those compressibilities. In fact, dv dp at constant temperature is negative kappa v. Now, I do realize that in our textbook, uh, they use a kappa sub T for isothermal, so we can introduce that notation. And we have dV dT at constant pressure. And this is equal to V. I've been using beta because that's what I've always used in the past, but in this book, it's V alpha. Beta and alpha are the same, just different nomenclatures from different books. So if we do this and make these substitutions, what we see is that dp dv at constant s is equal to c sub p over t, negative v kappa, and we'll put the subscript t on there, c sub p over t plus v, and you can use either alpha or beta, squared. I hate fractions with fractions in them, so we'll multiply top and bottom by t. Rearrange this so that I don't have to have a minus at the front of that grouping. And we have this expression in terms of measurable quantities. Now this technique of writing a partial derivative in terms of a Jacobian, introducing the variables that we desire, simplifying whatever you can see to simplify, such as my common P here, and then looking for ways to turn these into useful quantities. So those definitions of measurable quantities or if you're happy with a partial derivative, that's fine. Anything that you have that's still a little too weird, like the DSDP at constant T, those we're gonna look for Maxwell's and see if there's anything that we can use there. This concludes this video lesson. Thank you very much for your time.